go killer, you kills it. Watch that drink in my hand, don't spill it. Cause y'all die. What is up? Welcome to another episode of Maximilian Must Know. This is gonna be a very different video from my channel. And before we get into that video, let me just let you guys know what my set of the day is. Uh, it is Iris 39 by Le Labo. The more I wear this one, the more I'm sort of appreciating it for the brilliance that it is. It's just this buttery, almost fatty Iris fragrance with patchouli, carrot seed. There's some civet in there under everything else. It's just a beautiful springtime Iris that I think is consistently overlooked when people talk about great Iris fragrances. It's a little femme, but there's not many florals here. It's just a really nice earthy, um, very sort of different take on Iris. If you like Iris and patchouli, I think you would love this one. I am absolutely in love with it at this point. Now, this is a video that's really not meant to offend anyone at all, seriously. Please, I don't want other reviewers to take offense to this, but the question here is, should a fragrance reviewer feel obligated to have some real knowledge, knowledge of how fragrances are made? And I think um, the answer to that question is yes. And the reason that I say that is because after spending just four months trying to make my own perfumes, I want to go back and redo all of my old reviews. And here's the reason why. Now, I still think that my ability to tell you whether a scent smells good and which situations it would work in has always been valid. And I think anyone who loves fragrance can do that. Um, if they have your taste. But once they start, or I start talking about what I'm actually smelling, you know, that's almost impossible unless you really had access to those materials. And the problem is compounded because so much of what we're smelling, uh, almost exclusively in the case of mass-produced fragrances, whether it be Nautica, or, or Creed uh, are aroma chemicals. You know, you smell green Irish tweed and you go, whoa, what beautiful lavender. Uh, no, it's really like, wow, what really good dihydro merceno. Uh, you smell a gourmand fragrance and think, wow, they really nailed the vanilla. Well, it's more likely they use super cheap vanillin or coumarin crystals. Uh, everyone, including myself, loves Nasamato fragrances but you think you're smelling hashish and resins and it's probably uh, overdoses of stuff like norlimbanol and cashmere. Um, I thought like many others, uh, the real pop behind Dior Sauvage was Ambroxan. But once you get and smell diluted Ambroxan, you start to realize that Ambroxan really isn't present enough to solely re be responsible uh, for the compliment garnishing freshness of Sauvage. Now, these are, these are things that I had no idea about six months ago. And it's made it really hard for me to watch a lot of other reviewers out there. In fact, if they're not really in the industry, like Renee Zayas, who's now, you know, selling fragrances, um, or I, someone who I know who has chemicals and essential oils like Renaissance, or you know Peter over at Fragrance View, I really start to question what I'm watching and why I'm watching it. Now there are some reviewers who are just so talented and who I trust so much their opinion that I'll always watch them because I know if they say something I could take it to the bank. Whether or not they can tell the difference between Givadon Synthetic Rose or real Bulgarian Rose Auto. Um, but I now I watch reviewers talking about picking up clary sage and a Poppinax and cypress and the nuances of Gaiac wood and civet. And I really wonder, without having these things, and some are very hard to get, and some you can't just stroll into a garden or a flower shop and smell, how do you really know what you're smelling? I mean, guys, I was so often with civet and Gaiac and oak moss and real tonka and real vanilla and vanillin uh, smell like. 
Now, maybe it's just me, and maybe reviewers, other reviewers, really do know what they're talking about. I don't know. I, it's unfair for me to say that they don't, but I do wonder about it. And again, this is not a video for me to shit on reviewers in the fragrance community. I always say, I always have said this, and I'm always going to stick with this. Watch the reviewers that you enjoy uh, their videos. But realizing how off I was in so many things, I really feel like reviewers, we as a community should have some responsibility to at some point smell at the very least the most basic things. And if you love fragrances, you should do the same if you're really interested. And, you know, maybe you could watch me and say, well, you didn't think that until you started doing this. And that's true. What else can I say? You're right about that. Maybe I'm just the first person to say it. I wish someone else, I wish Kerosene, you know, who reviewed fragrances and then got into it, had kept making videos and talked about this. Um, because it, to me, it becomes very different once you start making these and you start to look at the whole thing and go, man, I, I just, I don't know how people can can really be reviewing unless they, they make the extra effort to extend, uh, to extend their knowledge. And the reality is you can go to a website like Perfumer's Apprentice, you know, if you're looking for, for aroma chemicals, they have a nice selection of naturals as well. Or you can go to Eden Botanicals just for naturals and you can spend a hundred bucks. Um, and that's, we know what reviewers spend. We know what top reviewers are making. They're, they're clearing more than a hundred dollars a month. And for that hundred dollars, you can get 20 different materials. Um, you know, uh, Perfumer's Apprentice, which to me is, is such a blessing, uh, for for this sort of um, home perfumer. And I wish, you know, the only thing I wish about them is, is I wish they gave samples with their orders. But at Perfumer's Apprentice, you can get $4, 4 ml sizes of so many different things. Um, and I test myself every day to make sure my nose can differentiate bergamot from tangerine and ambretolide from exalkaline and elemy from camphor and sandalwood from amorous. I'm not suggesting that anyone be that neurotic. I'm working really hard to be a perfumer and one of the most important things to me to do is to make sure my nose is sharp. Um, but what I am saying is guys, get bergamot, get some coumarin, get some vanillin, some synthetic oods and some, some synthetic rose, some indole, some castorium, and learn what these materials smell like. And I think it will totally change your perception of the fragrances that you own and fragrances that you'll want to purchase in the future. Guys, I wish to God I had done this prior to reviewing my first fragrance. And I really recommend that if you want to do anything other than give very basic impressions on a fragrance, that, that you do this. Um, now, with that said, with that said, again, guys, you know, anyone can do anything they want. What I'm trying to do here is from experience, tell you about a mistake that I feel that I made and, and, and hopefully others won't repeat that mistake. We're, we're in a wonderful age where, um, where folks have access to these materials. You can order them online for super cheap amounts, you can get them and you can really start to understand uh, the materials that are making up the fragrances that you smell. And even that knowledge won't get you to the finish line because a lot of these um, perfume houses like Shivadon, like IFF, like Fermanish, they have captive molecule materials that they hold in house and that they, you know, that, that probably make up a lot of the fragrances you smell that you'll never get your hands on but at least you can start to understand what's making up the fragrances you smell and without that knowledge how can you really tell how can you really tell a consumer what they're getting you know you can say whether you like it or not you can tell them what situations you feel it's appropriate for but you really can't tell them what you're picking up unless you've actually smelled that material raw on its own and to me that's just basic knowledge um, and again I'm not trying to be a dick by putting this out there I'm just I, I don't know I'm just telling you what I what I've experienced and I wish I wish to God I wish to God 
when I started reviewing, someone else had made a video like this and said the same thing because I think I would have gotten these materials a lot earlier. Always something in New York, guys. Always something in New York. And it would have changed my videos for the better and it would have changed the way that I reviewed fragrances for the better. Uh, and I'm sorry about that, to be honest with you, because... Um, because when you actually smell these things, um, it's a lot different than, than when you smell them in a fragrance. As I said, 99% of the time, you're not smelling what, what the notes that they intend you to, that they say are in the fragrance. You're smelling chemicals meant to smell like that notes, and that's fine. But everyone should smell real jasmine, absolute. Everyone should smell rose. Everyone should smell authentic oud. Everyone should smell civet. Everyone should smell castoria. Everyone should smell these things before they before they dissect the fragrance. That's not that's my opinion. Again, I'm not taking it further than this. Do what you want. Watch what watch whichever reviewers you want. But any reviewer who watches my videos, um, I would say, guys, you know, spend that hundred bucks and just educate yourselves further. You know, even if you don't want to make fragrances, just educate yourselves, and uh, I think it'll help you in the long run. And again, it's not going to cost you that much more than than a bottle of fragrance and you might actually do it and say wow i love this i want to just check out more raw materials um, and i think you'll you'll be the better reviewer for that so guys just my opinion you know video i just felt like i, I needed to do at some point hope you hope everyone's enjoyed it and i'll see you later this week with more videos guys obviously bubble, this is is bubble yum trapped in a land where the hustle and the struggle from knee muscle i got it wolf knives a couple guns cultural icon pythons i ride on now niggas wanna let bygones be bygones